a highly qualified and well-networked and credible set of individuals from a range of ethnic backgrounds, the industry in its static nature is still focused on the individuals who are excluded rather than those who do the excluding. This speaks to the way that the margin is co-opted in service of the center. Uh, she quotes Bell Hooks, um, her 1989 essay, Choosing the Margin as a Space of Radical Openness. I'm waiting for them to stop talking about the other, to stop even describing how important it is to be able to speak about differences. It is not just important that we speak about, but how and why we speak. Often the speech about the other is also a mask, an oppressive talk, hiding gaps, absences, that space where our words would be if we were speaking, if there was silence, if, if we were there. This we is that us in the margins, that we who inhabit marginal space that is not a site of domination but a place of resistance. Enter that space. How and why we speak, to me, is the most fundamental reason of a documentary practice. And with this in mind, I want to say a few words about Flea by Jonas Poho Rasmussen, which screens tomorrow. So I must confess that when I first saw that Flea was selected to the London Film Festival, where I select films from the Middle East, North Africa, the Gulf, and Iran, a really broad region, um, but that sometimes includes Afghanistan, um, I refused to see it. I read that it was made by a Danish white man about the experience of an Afghan man, though it was in Danish, and also that everyone else was raving about it, which I tend to be quite skeptical of. So my family is from Iran, a neighbor of Afghanistan, and when you come from a country so regularly depicted stereotypically and negatively by the news, you learn to become skeptical of interest in it because the center doesn't go to the margin for no reason. But anyhow, I decided before the festival started that I was going to have to engage with this film because this film was going to find a way to engage with me whether I liked it or not. So I went to a 9 a.m. press screening with really a feeling of ambivalence. And I was really happy to be proved wrong. And I was overwhelmingly moved to be reminded that documentary at its best is a space of care, that common ground isn't always obvious. And as I've regularly said, so myself, the story is all in the telling. And there are so many things I could say about Flea. Um, it's a film that doesn't shy away from depicting the avoidable, brutal reality of the refugee condition and making us question the increasing borders and walls all around us. It has an excellent soundtrack um, to remind us that there are things that have long connected countries and people, and one of them is music. But more importantly, friendship, love, trust, and these are the beating heart of the film. They are, in fact, the reasons why the film is made in the way it is, why it is primary, primarily in Danish, why it's fronted by the director alone. And one of the things I appreciate the most about it is the way that it places Afghanistan within a wider world rather than making it into a space over there, into an other. It was very telling to me that Jonas Poho Rasmussen, the director, comes from a background in radio because Flea is a story built on listening. And although there are many elements in the film that could be construed as controversial, controversy is not how he chooses to tell the story. And through his choice, he illustrates that documentary need not be extractive. It doesn't have to capitalize on things that the market has identified as lucrative. He decides to center friendship. He centers trust. He centers care. And I underline this not because it's rare in itself, although actually I think it is, I underline it because it's rare to see this kind of care and consideration gain center stage attention. So these are all things I was able to tell uh, Jonas Rasmussen himself, including the fact that I absolutely didn't want to see his film. Um, because after seeing it, I told my festival colleagues that I had to host all of its Q and A's. Um, <laughs> it felt really important to me that the film was then also framed in a way that brought the center to the margin on the margin's own terms. And I decided, obviously, I was the person to do that. Um, but such care really takes time. And I wanted to note that, that I see care in the fact that the festival's curation has been collaborative, including working with Invisible Women, the Feminist Film Collective, with the Kent Refugee Action Network, with the East Kent Gleaning Club, um, with local artists, with curator Karen Alexander, with Origins Untold, and not forgetting Gabriella the Fairy Dogmother. <laughs> 
um, that there's a community meal, that there's a dog-friendly screening, that there are multiple venues, that they are accessible. These are lessons that the margin teaches the centre in being its own centre. Charlotte Ginsburg's film, Songs for the River, teaches a similar lesson, the chronicle of her housing cooperative's experience of the pandemic and of lockdown as a reminder of what community can look like, what care means in action. So a small note for the filmmakers in the room, that at the start of the pandemic, and let's not pretend that it's finished, that, that many film financiers added a kind of 15% to budgets so that they could cover, or filmmakers could cover unforeseen COVID-related costs. To me, we should read this as an open door to think more broadly about care and normalizing the idea of budget lines for safety and mental health, health needs, caring responsibilities. That money was there. It can stay there. We should fight for that. Um, so with this in mind, I wanted to end with a few humble suggestions to keep displacing that all-consuming center for all of our benefits. Firstly, I've got this. Oh yeah, firstly, I wanted to recommend the work of Sonia Childress, Childress? In particular, her, her articles, A Reckoning and Beyond Empathy, both published on Medium. In A Reckoning, she reflects on documentaries' colonial beginnings and what needs to be acknowledged and changed in the form. In Beyond Empathy, she asks how we got to a place where we need to humanize other human beings and their experience, which is what documentaries sometimes claim to do. For anyone interested in deep thinking um, around institutional and structural change, Gemma decides this work isn't for us, is freely available online. I think it's really interesting that she released it on Google Docs as a way of kind of not connecting it to an institution and also thinking about what access means. Do look it up. I also wanted to, um, to recommend the work of Raising Films, an organization supporting parents and carers in the UK film industry, which I think everyone should engage with, whether you, you have caring responsibilities or not. Um, I think that, I mean, they do some of the most thoughtful, resourceful, care-centered and inspirational work. Their recent report, How We Work on the Impact of COVID, is really important reading for all of us. Um, and it's one part of many things that they do, but I, to me, they really are trying to usher in a new way of living and working, which is just better. Um, but finally, really, I, I wanted to, to encourage you, I suppose, to believe in your own power to shift dynamics that disempower you and others. That means listening and amplifying quieter voices or seeking out films by women, non-binary people, calling people by their chosen pronouns, considering access needs to make a space or a screening inclusive, championing independent directors at the cinema or online or TV or TikTok or wherever like film is going to go next. Do it especially if you've not heard about that director. Do it even if you can't pronounce their name. It's something that happens to me a lot. I think it's really important that we remember this and not underestimate the power of it. Validating someone's work and their right to be center stage on their own terms is an act of care. It costs you nothing, but it can change everything. Thank you so much for your attention and wishing you all a lovely festival. Okay, thanks, Elham. That was amazing. And I'm glad that the spirit of what we're trying to do with this festival of being inclusive is kind of getting across. And in that spirit, if anyone out there wants to talk to us about what you want to see next year at the festival, we'd be totally interested in hearing from you. Um, we're having a brief break now. Um, the story of looking is going to start in about 20 minutes at 7.45. So you've got time to uh, have a comfort break, go and get another drink, have a chat with the people next to you. Um, you're welcome to stay in here if you'd like and talk to people, but if you want to go up and have a drink, then you totally can. But um, stick around for the film because it's brilliant. But um, once again, thank you to Elham. That was really incredible and a really great start to the festival. So another round of applause for Elham. Yeah.